Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So this is the brief overview of the OpenSUSE distribution. So uh, I've been playing around with this uh, for probably about a week on and off here. And uh, there, there's some things I like about the OpenSUSE system, but uh, there's actually some pretty big criticisms I have as well. Now, OpenSUSE is one of the, uh, one of the older distros and uh, one that... Uh, a lot of your your heavy Linux guys will swear by, and even uh, some people in in forums will even suggest it as a beginner distro. And I I, I kind of disagree. Um, and uh, you know I'm not like a, an old cat with with Linux, uh, but I do have experience in all the different desktop operating systems. And I gotta say that uh, as far as as uh, identifying things, um, you know, so far since I just installed this. Um, OpenSUSE this afternoon, I've actually found some things that I haven't resolved yet, and I'm just not going to bother taking the time to resolve them. Um, but let's jump into some of the some of the great things about it, some of the things that set it apart. Um, unlike most of the other distros that are out there based on Debian or some branch of Debian, this is actually based on the old Slackware. So it is different. If you're doing terminal commands, you'd want to use either yum or uh, DNF. Um, whichever uh, direction you're moving towards. And um, one of the things that, that I like with OpenSUSE is it does give you a couple different options. So if you go to their main page, which is the OpenSUSE.org, and that's uh, S-U-S-E, not S-U-S-A. Um, so OpenSUSE.org, it gives you two options here. You have the tumbleweed and you have the leap. And the, the difference here that doesn't, they don't kind of give you as much details if you're kind of a beginner on Linux. So the difference between these two is the tumbleweed really as soon as packages and software and kernels become available and are considered released, Tumbleweed will issue an update to push them in. So if you are a programmer or a developer and you want to make sure that your system's working with the absolute latest and greatest, Tumbleweed is where you want to go. And uh, in fact, it is Tumbleweed that I installed here. It installs all the latest, uh, the kernels, all the latest packages. So if you want to always make sure that you're on the, the newest versions of the software, then Tumbleweed's way to go. A leap, a little bit more is done in this to make sure that you have a, a more stable, um, a more stable system. There, there is a regular release schedule for for the leap program, uh, much like almost all the projects. Like Ubuntu is is actually named. There's a new version of it every year, and it's named for the year and the month. And you have a, a 1604, and eventually there's going to be a 1610. And, um, you know, the, so the different distros will, will use different services like that. Uh, one of the things that I really like about the OpenSUSE is the YAST um, administrative settings. This is something that is lacking from some of the other systems. And oh, I think I typed that wrong. Let me do that again. Uh, this is something different from a lot of the other settings and that it gives you a graphical user interface by which you can adjust a lot of the settings. And this is different from the settings panel. So there is, uh, I believe there is a set. Eh, maybe it's not. Okay. There's a lot of different settings in here. Uh, maybe, maybe I was, oh, I was thinking of, um, I think I was thinking of this, this one here. Um, so this guy here, we have the, the more traditional settings panel, like right here. Or you have this YAST one here, which is a much more robust system and uh, basically gives you a graphical user interface to adjust all the different settings. So this for this reason, this is what allows uh, OpenSUSE to be a a fabulous distro if you want to be learning how to be a sysadmin and learning a lot of terminal things because this will give you a good interface between the graphical management of the computer and and seeing what some of the uh, the commands can be now this is uh, it can be a little bit daunting going through all of this uh, but uh, the YAS system is a, a very good point um, that that they have in in the OpenSUSE platform 
So other than that, I'll, I'll tell you, I don't know much more about OpenSUSE as a distro. I generally stick with the Ubuntu-based type systems, um, mostly due to the fact that they seem to work better out of the box. Uh, this one here, the problem I have been having is the clock doesn't work. Um, the analog clock works fine. So if I uh, draw an analog clock over here, um, this is actually the, oh wait, is that the correct time? Never mind, that's not the correct time either. <laughs> I thought it was. Uh, you can see here the calendar is seems to be blank. If you go down to the digital clock, which you can get to on the alternatives, it gives me a blank space. Um, in theory, uh, it's an issue with the uh, with the time zones file. So I looked at the time zones file, made sure I, that was fixed up, and that seems to be fixed. That a reboot didn't solve that problem. I went into Yast time and date settings. All the time and date settings are correct. That didn't solve it. Then I changed the time and date settings to manual settings. That still didn't resolve it. I'm not going to bother because this is not a computer I'm doing any any real work on at this point in time. But this is a little concerning to me that that the clock doesn't even work right now. And so uh, some people are saying this is a problem that they've seen, but I haven't seen it in some of the latest forms now. Which kind of brings me to another uh, another issue is that there's not a, a real good centralized forum or place for discussion about the distro. So if you look up a question on the internet, you don't get nearly as much help or advice as you do if you type in the same question on the Ubuntu system. And so just type in the distro and the question and uh, on a basic search on the internet and you're gonna get a lot of results if you're running Ubuntu or Mint, um, even Fedora, um, but you're not gonna get that quite as much with the, with the OpenSUSE. Um, Let's see. Uh, I also have noticed, okay, that's another problem. The Windows key does not trigger out of the box. Uh, I'd have to get that configured. So I have to come down here and actually hit the button rather than type it. Now, once you get this, uh, this up here, then uh, you can just type things in. One of the biggest problems is there is no centralized software manager that is an easy to use system. So, in the Ubuntu and uh, the Linux Mint, the Peppermint, the Fedora, you have the GNOME uh, software manager. And in this one here, we get something that is very much like the Synaptic Package Manager, which means I actually really like it because I like those package managers. But for the, the novice or for even just searching for something, it's, it's very difficult. Um, so if I wanna, explore what type of email programs are out there, there's not really a good place to do that. I can come down here and hit package groups and say, okay, we're gonna do uh, internet, if I can find it, so network, let's do that. I thought there was one specifically for internet. Am I missing it? Uh, let's look at office, let's do office. So if you click in here, you see this format here, which is essentially the list of all of the packages, which is great if you know exactly what you're looking for. For example, if I want to install Thunderbird on this, I can just type in Thunderbird or Thunder here. And here I can install Thunderbird by clicking on this. And I'm not sure if it installs all of the packages, uh, like all of the dependencies. I didn't, uh, I should have tested that before I started on the video. Okay, so this uh, this wants you, so we'll check for dependencies. It says, okay, you wanna install this one as well. So in theory, this is installing Thunderbird for us. So I knew what the program was I was looking for, but if I wanted to browse for a program, uh, I don't see a way to do that, at least not without installing, uh, installing something else. Um, so those are kind of the things I, I really didn't like about the OpenSUSE platform, and I'm sure that there are going to be OpenSUSE evangels who will uh, tell me how to fix all these problems, and that's great. I'd love to learn more about the system. Uh, it's for me as uh, as a computer specialist, and you know, different different branches of computers. I I don't find this quite as user friendly as as I find uh, the other distros that uh, that I've looked at. Okay, so. See if that's gonna give that just a second here. Let's see if this is actually installing. Okay, let's just hit finish. Now let's go and we'll see if we can uh, find that. Uh, 
Okay, so there it installed Thunderbird right where I thought it would install it, so that's good. Uh, so that, that works out great. Now, another thing, and uh, I'm, I believe this is more dealing with KDE than OpenSUSE, but one of the things that I really like about, about this particular distro here is if I don't like this menu, in fact, this is not the menu that came default installed, but if you any of these applications that uh, there's another similar way to do it, if you right-click, there's this alternatives star. Clicking on this will actually allow you to change the switcher, uh, the, the menu type. So there's three basic menu types. Uh, this one here is the application launcher, which I like, I really like this, uh, but I don't like it as my start button. This kind of is almost like the Windows 10 start screen. Kind of scary, I know I just turned off everybody to that now. <laughs> or if you wanna be, be more modern, it's like the launcher on the Mac, you know? Um, I actually really like that thing. In fact, I like it so much, I put it right over here for if I want it. It's it's right over on, on the lower right of my screen here. Um, but you have that as one option. You have the application menu, uh, which looks more like a traditional menu here. And I use this type of menu on a lot of computers and I was like, okay, well, actually I wanna do something different on this. And so I use the uh, application launcher on this computer. So the application launcher is this, this more modern system, which is, uh, I really like this too. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely different, gives me a little bit of variety, but really doesn't get in my way. Whereas this launcher actually kind of gets in my way. Like this, the, the problem with that Windows 8 start screen is it kind of got in people's way. I couldn't work through it as, as quickly as I would have liked. All right, um, so let's see here. Um, you can right click on the desktop here to add the widgets, add panels, um, and the desktop settings is down at the bottom. So if you do wanna change your themes, uh, as I did in my um, desktop environment system, the first thing I did is I changed my theme to a really dark one. Um, I, I wanted to do that for this video, but I thought it was a little too dark for the video. So um, I did want to um, uh, change the themes out. So here, actually, it looks like I'm just on the place to change the desktop uh, image, not the... Um, uh, not the full settings, so sorry about that. Like I said, this is a distro, just a brief distro overview, so it's um, uh, it's not a, a distro I'm an expert at. It's the configure the desktop was one I was thinking of. This is where you can change all your themes around. So I, I like that they have a lot of different uh, a lot of different uh, settings inside here. So we can change our themes, we can adjust our colors, our fonts, our icons. Everything's nice and easy to do right here from the user interface. Uh, the KDE desktop does support the online accounts. So if you do happen to integrate online accounts, uh, you can do that. And let's see. So here's your system administration. This goes right back out to the YAST. Um, so one of the things that uh, that to me is a little different, but something that I do want to play with uh, with KDE a little bit more and with OpenSUSE a little bit more, just so I can explore this a little bit different because it, it's way different from from the way I generally have my workflows. I usually have a giant mess all over my folder. In fact, my production computers are so messy <laughs> that. Uh, Sometimes, you know, you got to take a, a, an hour to clean the desktop every now and again. And so what you can do here is with these desktop folders, and this is a KDE thing, um, not necessarily an OpenSUSE thing, is I can set all my folders over in these groups, and that might actually make my management a little bit easier. Uh, so the file manager on OpenSUSE here is Dolphin, and I'm not never going to get used to that anytime soon. It's just single click to open up your folders. Uh, so this guy here, uh, it reminds me of the the Nemo, um, in that I can do icon adjustments from right in here, and it doesn't lock me to just a couple sizes. So I can really choose exactly where I want the icon sizes to be. Um, I can view the, the icons, the folders, or the lists and details. We have a nice search feature. Again, the feature I really like about Nemo as a web developer is needing to get into a FTP directory, and you can do that right here. Just go right into your FTP server uh, right on this command box here. 
Uh, so that's actually a very nice feature that I like. And then you can control the, um, let's see, where was that at? Uh, you can do a, a split view here, so you can have a couple of different uh, a couple different folders open. Uh, this could actually be handy for dragging and dropping and manipulating folders across uh, across a, a couple different platforms. There, so there's a little bit about the desktop. There we have our I put a little launcher over here with probably the most common uh, the most common uh, folder systems that you might use. So I put in a, a folder browser there, which would replace the, you know, the like the old Windows, my computer desktop for me. I put in the uh, Office documents, uh, media player, and email platform, and my internet right over there on the side, so that I can quickly launch to those. So that, uh, in a real brief nutshell, is what you get with uh, with the OpenSUSE, uh, essentially out of the box. I did a couple little theme changes here, and uh, I added a few widgets to the desktop. Um, overall, I would uh, I would consider this more of a, a system for an advanced user, uh, partially due to the KDE. Although what I really liked is when you install this, you can choose which desktop environment you install. So it's not like many of the other distros where you download the, the ISO image for the particular desktop environment that you would like. This, you download the one, desk, the, the one ISO image, and then now the default key has the KDE, but when you actually go to install this, you can pick which one of the desktop environments uh, you want to install. And I do not recall if all of the major environments were there. I know GNOME was there, uh, KDE was the default. Um, I believe I saw Mate, and there were some other ones in there as well. You can check the documentation. I'm sure that's that's very well documented. Um, overall, I think that uh, the OpenSUSE, at least the KDE OpenSUSE, and probably likely the GNOME OpenSUSE, uh, is going to be for the person which has a uh, a better computer system you're not going to run uh, in fact let me just uh, see if I can see if there's a system resource on here I said I'm, I'm a little out of my a uh, little out of my element here on OpenSUSE but uh, that's that's quite okay uh, you're if nothing else you're getting a, a, a fresh perspective on this uh, just wanted to see how much memory is being used here so this is actually telling me only about half a gigabyte uh, of memory being used. So that's, yeah, actually that's that's not too bad. Let's see. Yeah, this is telling me right down here as well. About half a gigabyte of memory is being used. So I don't know, maybe you can run this uh, run this on, on a little older computer. I, the That's actually a lot lower than I thought it would be. Um, but anyway... Um, Probably not for the, the very beginning novice Linux user, but for definitely for the person that, that is comfortable playing around with the system and, and trying to get things working. Uh, I do like the customizability of the KDE desktop and uh, the OpenSUSE uh, with the, the YAST administrative panel would be very handy to learn how to do the, um, uh, the Linux commands. So I hope this uh, overview was uh, beneficial and uh, I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.